do yourself no harm. We don't mean any harm. All we're doing is singing. All we're doing is praising the Lord. All we're doing is causing a miraculous earthquake to take place here. As we praise the Lord, do yourself no harm. We're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. And, and then he says, he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do? To be saved sirs what must i do to be saved sirs there's one thing i need from you you tell me if you could sing when you are in the prison you have something if heaven could respond to your singing at the midnight you have something i don't have i realize i now recollect the mess i know why you are here I remember that that damsel was following after you and he said these are the servants of the most high God who show unto us the way of salvation that's why they laid hands on you that's why you came to the prison that's why you are singing that's why your God the God of heaven has not performed this miracle for you. I believe you are the servants of the Most High God, showing unto us the way of salvation. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And then he told him, and it says in verse 31, and he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And the same thing we're saying today. The purpose of the deliverance. The reason for the deliverance. And what the climax of the miracle that has taken place is for you to bring up the question in your mind, in your heart, and say, Sirs, we've seen this miracle. We've seen this manifestation of God's power. And we know you are the servants of the Most High God. And you know the way of salvation. I want to be saved. You'll be saved in Jesus' name. Then we're told in verse but told him verse 32 and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house and he took them the same hour of the night and he washed their stripes and was baptized and he and all his house straightway and when he had brought them into his house obviously he was born again obviously this was the philippian jailer these were the person that put them in the inner prison. These were the person tormenting them before. He washed their wounds. He brought them into his own house. He fellowshiped with them. He believed in the Lord with all his house. And he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. We need to pursue passionate preaching. Fervent preaching serious preaching when we see the manifestation of the delivering miracle of the lord i'm going to show you something now point number three i don't know whether you've ever noticed this in this passage the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance you know, all those prisoners that were there come back to verse 26 suddenly. There was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open. All the doors were open. They were not sleeping, they were awake. Because it says, Paul and Silas preached and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They were awake. And they knew. They knew when they began to sing. They knew how long they sang. They knew when the earthquake took place. They saw all the doors open. And they also felt all their bands being loosed. But, you know something? None of them asked the question, Sirs, what shall we do to be saved? None of them delivered, but they remained in bondage. Their bands were loose, they remained in bondage. 
Miracle came from heaven, opened all the doors. None of them attempted to come out. Deliverance came, but they remained in bondage. The tragedy of the people who are very near the power of God that's able to bring deliverance and open doors, and yet none of them went through those open doors. You know, sometimes it can happen to people, even people who say they're children of God, they are born again. Here we are, for example, in our church. I was praising the Lord and praying and just singing to the Lord. And God opens a door here, opens a door there, opens a door there. And we're so entrenched in what we're doing that we just abandon those open doors. And we just neglect those open doors. And we are to see if no door had opened. You know, sometimes it can happen to an overseer like that, a pastor like that, in a local government like that. And you know, the people you've been facing pressure, and you've been persecution, and you've been facing restriction. And you say, you cannot go here, you cannot go there. Nobody wants to listen to you. All of a sudden, as the people of God, they turn around. They say, there is nothing to worry about. And there is nothing to panic about. And there is nothing to cry about. And we're just praising the Lord and singing unto the Lord. And the bad things that happen, we say, leave all that alone. And leave the imprisonment alone. And leave all those harassment of the enemy alone. Just sing unto the Lord. And the Lord looks at our hand that was singing unto him. And then he opens a door here. Opens a door there. Opens a door there. And then we just keep on the routine scene, the traditional thing. Just do what we're all always did until those doors close again i pray your doors will not close again but the tragedy the tragedy the tragedy of the people whose bands were loosed freedom came liberty came authority came and everybody knew that these people are messengers of the lord of god in heaven and yet even with those open doors None of them went through the open doors. You know, the Lord said, I set an a door before you which is open, and no man shall close it in Jesus' name. Open doors of evangelism. Open doors of preaching. Open doors of revival. Open doors where doors have been closed before. By your singing, by your praying, by your seeking the face of the Lord, a miracle will come from heaven. I said a miracle will come from heaven. And then you couldn't move when your legs were in the stalks. But now when the miracle comes from heaven and then the doors are open and all the bands are loose, that's the time to get up and go through those open doors. I pray that God will not leave us the way we are. Closed minds and closed eyes and closed to understanding that even when the doors are open you don't know how to get up go through and then do exploits for the lord we're going to do exploits for the lord in jesus name so the first scene although their bands were loosed although all the doors were open not one of them Budged. Not one of them moved. Not one of them asked a question with a desire. What shall we do to be saved? The Lord is telling us that the reason why He performs miracles for us and the reason why He opens all those doors for us and the reason why He makes all the bands to be loose, the reason is so that, is so that. Sinners will come to repentance. Believers will go through the open door. And then we'll do what we have never done and see what we have never seen. I'm looking at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. And we're looking at this from verse 4. Romans chapter 2 verse 4. Or despises thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that his goodness the goodness of god leadeth thee to repentance all those people they didn't pray they just listened to paul and silas praying and singing they didn't ask for anything without even asking for a miracle the miracle came 
they need to understand that the goodness of the Lord was leading them to repentance. And I pray that the miracle that you receive, because you are going to receive miracle. I said you are going to receive miracle. And I pray that the miracles you receive, the open doors that God grants you and grants us, and the binds that are loose and broken, I pray that those miraculous wonders in your life, in my life, in our lives together, will lead us to repentance in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. But after thy hardness, those, those prisoners, I think they were hard in their heart. They said, yes, we we'll see the miracle. We're not going to do anything about that. Yes, we see the open doors. We're not going to do anything about that. Yes, we see that all our bands are loose. We're not going to do anything about that. Hardness of heart. And religious people could be hard-hearted, you know, like Pharisees. They were religious people. Sadducees, they were religious people. Sanhedrin, they were religious people. Priests. Levites, they were religious people. The goodness of the Lord that brought Jesus unto them, blind eyes open, lame people rising up and walking, and the maimed who have a part of their body all gone, replaced again, and great miraculous wonders, signs and wonders taking place in their, in their midst, yet crucify him, get rid of him. I pray that will not happen to us in Jesus' name. I thought to say, good, good, amen. amen. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Now, those were not the only people that saw miracle spectacular miracle miracle they never knew they must thought of before and yet remain in the impenitence and i read to you matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 4 here you'll find once again how god performs spectacular miracle and yet the people that saw that miracle and that miracle touched them they did nothing about that the lord is telling us about the peril of perpetual prisoners after deliverance in matthew chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 2 and behold there was a great a great what tell me out loud a great earthquake. You remember where we're coming from? You remember where we're coming from? Paul and Silas prayed and sang. Praises unto the Lord. And then suddenly, there was a great earthquake. And then the doors were open. And then the bands were loose. Here we're told, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it and his countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow and for the fear of him the keepers did shake and became as dead men the keepers did shake and became as dead men they fell to the ground that miracle kind of made them so weak they couldn't carry themselves again look at verse 11 now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed and revealed unto the chief priest all the things that were done and when they were assembled with the elders and are taking counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers. Hush money. Shut up money. Yes, we understand. Christ rose from the dead. An angel came from heaven. A mighty earthquake took place. Something splendid, something wonderful that had never happened, happened. 
And what did they do about that? They just silenced the soldiers. None of them said, Lord, what shall we do to be saved? Now we know. You have risen from the dead. Now we know a miracle that never took place before has taken place. What shall we do? We want to be saved. And all they said was in verse 13. And say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So that's all they said. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Everybody knew that it was just to silence them. But the point is, they remain sinners. Even though they saw that Jesus Christ, the Savior, who died three days ago, he rose again. That miracle of resurrection did not affect them. I pray you will not be like that. That after you have seen the great wonder of the Lord. And the great miracle of the Lord. That you will not be the person to just remain in bondage after the deliverance has come. We are coming back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And here is what they did. Here is what brought the miracle. Your miracle is coming. Miracle of salvation. Did you hear that amen went down when I mentioned salvation? <laughs> miracle of salvation. Miracle of conversion. A miracle of total freedom from sin and all the consequences of sin in your life in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 16, I'm reading there from verse 25. And at midnight, at the midnight of adversity, at midnight, at midnight of sickness, at midnight, at midnight of persecution, at midnight, the midnight of pain, at midnight, the midnight of suffering, at midnight, the midnight of the people of the world putting some yoke upon you, at midnight, the midnight of unexplainable, inexplicable trial and trauma in the lives of the people. Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not just, uh, it's not preaching alone. They prayed and they sang praises. In fact, they were not even praying for those prisoners. They were not praying for anybody. They were just praying to the Lord and just thanking God. Oh God, we thank you for this whole year. Oh God, we thank you for the sunshine and the rain. Oh God, we thank you because you've given us opportunity. Oh God, you've given us revelation. Oh God, we thank you for this and thank you for that. What a great God we're serving. What a mighty God we're serving. And you count your blessings and then count them one by one and see what the Lord has done. As they were doing that, then they just started singing, spontaneous singing. And when they started singing like that, here is what we're told. They sang praises to God and the prisoners heard them. And then it says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. Foundations of prison. The foundation of the prison was shaken. I said it will shake. But you know, you know, they didn't have any kind of. We're going to sing and pray for five minutes. We're going to sing and pray for ten minutes. They're all singing and looking at their wristwatches and singing and looking at, you know, the world clock. They just sang and they praised the Lord. If you're looking for miracle, the miracle is coming. I said the miracle is coming. But you know, if you, you either look at the miracle or you look at the time, you cannot look at two things at the same time. You cannot say, well, I'm looking at time, I'm looking at time. Miracle, come when you want to come. I'm looking at time. We're not looking at any time. We're not looking at this. We're looking unto God. I said we're looking unto God. And as we look unto God, and then we pray. And we sing praises unto the Lord. The spectacular will happen. I said the spectacular will happen. And we're going to receive miracles from heaven in Jesus' name. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone's bands here loosed? I said, wouldn't it be wonderful? I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone's bands were even